Okay, so what we did was derive the formula over my shoulder here on that whiteboard uh, using a combination of mental math, stuff we already know, like what something will be after a year, something simple like $100 after a year using a, an interest rate. We did that. That was the mental math part. But then we did a little bit of calculating and thinking to get to uh, what we have behind me. Um, in addition to mental math, to have derived that formula behind me. And that's what we did in the last piece. So if you're comfortable with that, then what we have to do in this piece won't be much of a leap. It'll be a pretty small step forward. See, in this piece, what we want to know is what is the present value of some future money. We're applying it to our little question, our little proposition, Last time, in the last video, we looked at, well, what, what will the $100 be worth in the future? If it's less than 105, I should take the 105 in the future. And that's how it turned out to be. We might have approached it differently, or we might be forced to approach things like this. We might have said, $105 in the future, what is that worth now? That's what we're out to do. That's how we find present value. But you notice in that formula over my shoulder and what we just derived, present value is already part of that formula. In mathematics, when you need to solve uh, one thing that's part of a formula, what that means is, or to solve for that one thing, what that means is to get that one thing by itself on one or other side of the equal sign. You have to isolate the thing you're looking for, and that is the formula for that thing. See, here we have a formula for this thing. But now we're being told we need to find this thing. So that just means we have to rearrange our formula so this thing is by itself on one or the other side of the equal signs. And then we have the formula for this thing. Same formula can be used to find a different variable in the formula. It actually could be arranged anyway to find any of the variables in that formula. But fortunately for us, these are the only two we have to worry about. So how do we do that? How do we solve for present value given what we have here? Well, let's think about it this way. Future value and present value, these are opposite things, right? To find future value, we're doing a multiplication between, we multiply present value times this interest rate factor here, right? This unit. What's the opposite of multiplication? It's division. We're looking for opposite things. So you might think of it as we have to do opposite things. Here we multiply to do the opposite thing. We need to divide. And remember, our goal is to get present value by itself. So before I just attack this long equation, what I could do is show you what I'm going to do with numbers that I know you'll be comfortable with. Suppose I treat this PV like X and I treat all of this with like, I don't know, three. So I just substituted three for all this. Suppose it amounted to three and this was just what we don't know. So I put an X there. And let's suppose I put in a 27 for that. So this is something I think most people would be more comfortable with than this. But what you do with this is also what you do with that. So what do we do with this? How do we get x by itself? Because right now I have that, that 3 tagging along with it. Well, I multiply both sides by 3, don't I? That cancels out. So I have x equals 27 divided by 3. That's 9. A lot of people probably did that in their heads, and that's fine. But that's what you did in your head. But this is what I'm interested in for today. I'm interested in the fact that we did that. Because since we divided the thing in parentheses, we put it into the 27 over here. Suppose we did the same behavior with this bigger thing up here, such that we would end up with PV is equal to FV divided by that. That's what we just did with 3x and 27, but with these bigger 
things with this bigger thing. It's the same behavior applied to a bigger uh, formula. So this is indeed our formula for present value. So now let's apply it to our problem of $100 versus $105 in three years in the future. Fill in what we know. We know that the future value of this offer is $105. So I'll put that in for this FB. And we still know the interest rate is 0.65% because that's what the interest rate that's available to us. So that's 1 plus 0 0.0065. That's expressed as a decimal. That's 0.65%. Uh, and we know it's three years. So that's our number of years there. And that will equal our present value. So $105 three years from now with the discounting rate, that's what this is called when it's bringing it back to the present, with the discounting rate of 0.65%, I could get with my calculator and what this comes out to be is 100,298. So the present value of $105 three years from now at 0.65% is 100,298. What would you rather have now? The $100 or something that's worth $102.98? I would rather have something that's worth $102.98. It's just that much better, 298. Of course, I know you're thinking, but you have to wait for it. You have to wait for that value of $105. And I don't want to wait. Nobody wants to wait. So how much we want to wait, or we're willing to wait, um, or what we would wait, be willing to wait for, these are also answers that we can find using our same initial formula up here just rearranging the terms as we've done here. Since Now this is beyond the scope of basic finance, but I know that if I don't address it, people will leave here thinking this is just dumb. I don't want to wait three years for $105, even if you tell me it's more valuable than $100 today. That's just dumb. I know people are thinking that. So let's assess just briefly here, since it's beyond the scope of this, how we could use this in a useful way, given that people are going to think that. What we could find is, well, how much do you discount future consumption for present consumption? See, the bank discounts it at 0.65%, because that's the... Uh, interest rate that's available to us. And that's the best interest rate I, I have available to me that's completely risk-free and, and low cost to uh, set up. So let's suppose I were able to tease it out of you. Well, okay, you don't want $100. Uh, you don't want $105 in three years. You'd rather have the $100 today. How many dollars would it take for you to be indifferent between $100 today and that amount in three years. Would $110 make you content to wait three years? Would $120? $150? Let's say you hold out and you say, I would want twice as much in three years. I would want $200 in three years. Well, if I could get that out of you, I could use that piece of information to find out your discount rate of how much you value present consumption over future consumption. So I could just fill in the numbers that I do know and solve for the numbers that I don't know. You see, if, you, if I could get it out of you that you valued $200 in the future, three years in the future, the same as $100 now, then what I could do is just fill in this formula. I would I just use this one. I could use that one too. Either one, they're the same thing. They're just rearranged, but I did it with this formula. I could fill it in and I could say, well, 
to you $100 now is equal to $200 in the future over 1 plus, this is what I don't know, your discount rate, and we're talking about three years in the future. So I could rearrange these terms and solve for R. When I rearrange these terms, these are interchangeable. I could multiply both sides by this and divide both sides by that, and what I would find is that we're talking about 200 over 100 is equal to 1 plus R to the third. Of course, that is 2 is equal to 1 plus R over the third, or to the third. And now what I need to do is take the cube root of 2, which I don't know off the top of my head, is, uh, is also 2 raised to the 1 third power. And so I'm out of space, so 1 point 2, call it 6, I'm rounding is equal to 1 plus r. And so you subtract 1 from both sides, and 0.26 is equal to r. So translated that to a, translating that to a percent, this is a person, whoever this is, who demanded $200, or was indifferent between $200 and one in three years, or $100 now. This person's discount rate is 26%, 0.26 is that as a decimal. 26% is how much more they value present consumption to future consumption, which is a very high rate. The average return over the last something like 90 years for the Standard & Poor's 500, the best market indicator of the stock market, it's only about 10%. So this is a person who uh, expects a higher return in their, in their present consumption over future consumption at something over twice that of the stock market. And the stock market is not risk-free, like our CD, of course. So it's a very high rate. But we can use that then to infer things about people or to compare different people's different tastes. So it's useful that way, too. I hope that was a little bit interesting, and I hope you find it useful.